葵花籽又叫葵瓜籽，系向日葵嘅果实。佢嘅籽仁里面含脂肪三十个 percent 至四十五个 percent， 最多可达六十个 percent。葵花籽油颜色金黄，澄清透明，气味清香，系欧洲人、俄罗斯人嘅主要食用油。佢含有大量亚油酸等人体必需嘅不饱和脂肪酸，可以促进人体細胞嘅再生同埋成长，保持皮肤健康。并且能够减少胆固醇喺血液中嘅淤积，系一种高级营养油。葵花籽油同其他植物油类一样，可以成为柴油汽车所使用嘅生物柴油。方法非常简单，可以用新鲜或者已用作煮食嘅葵花籽油。如果用已作煮食用途嘅葵花籽油，就需要先用网过滤，再将葵花籽油加热至一百二十至一百三十度华氏嘅温度，煮大约四小时。就已经可以直接加入柴油汽车嘅油缸里面，混合柴油一齐使用，容易减轻柴油成本。Before you begin making your biodiesel homebrew, follow these simple steps and find out how to filter your used cooking oil and ensure a good batch of biodiesel. You will need used cooking oil, a filter, a collection barrel, a biodiesel processor, and a tank thermometer. Step one. Collect your oil. You can spend the extra money and buy new cooking oil, or you can find a restaurant and ask them if you can take their used cooking oil off their hands. Used cooking oil will have a darker color to it, and will most likely have chunks of your favorite fried foods floating around. You will need to get rid of these mystery chunks before making your biodiesel homebrew. Step two: chunk removal. Filtering your used cooking oil will eliminate the chunks of food and other particles before you begin your biodiesel homebrew process. Larger chunks can contain water and can mess up your biodiesel reaction. Smaller suspended particles should also be allowed to settle so they don't attach to your heating element and muck up your processor. As you pour out your used cooking oil, let it run completely through the filter. The filter doesn't need to be too fine. A paint strainer or window screen will adequately remove the particles that are large enough to affect the biodiesel reaction. You will notice large chunks of fried mystery food collecting in the filter. This filtration process can be fairly quick, but you can let the filtered biodiesel settle anywhere from a couple of hours to a couple of days to let the smaller particles settle out. Once settling is complete, begin transferring your used cooking oil to the reaction tank on your processor. Step three: tank transfer. Take the hose that connects the collection barrel to the reaction tank on your biodiesel processor and connect it to the pump. Open up the valve on the reaction tank and open up the valve on the bottom of the collection barrel. To activate the transfer, simply turn on the pump on your processor. You will notice the dark used cooking oil traveling out of the bottom of the collection barrel, through the pump, through the processor, and up into the hose that empties into the reaction tank. Step four: the heat is on. As your cooking oil makes its way into the reaction tank, you need to heat up the oil to about 120 or 130 degrees Fahrenheit. During the heating process, the pump on your compressor will circulate the oil. Circulating and heating the oil distributes the heat and prevents the oil from getting too hot right near the heating element. This heating and circulation process will take approximately one to four hours, depending on how much oil you are heating, the initial temperature of the oil, the outside air temperature, insulation on the processor, and how powerful your heating element is. Congratulations! You've just properly filtered your used cooking oil and can begin your biodiesel homebrew process. By choosing to use an alternative fuel, you've helped to cut down on CO2 emissions, cut dependence on foreign oil, and saved yourself some money. Nice work. But the above method will leave the oil in the reaction tank of the reaction tank, that is, the fatty acid and fatty acid. The fatty acid will gradually absorb the oil into the heating element. So, to achieve the same effect, you will need to use it directly on the reaction tank, and not use it as a regular fuel. 但系，将葵花籽油或者大麻籽油，又或者任何曾经用作煮食嘅植物油，变为生物柴油嘅话，就要用化学方法将甘油去除。Biodiesel is a more eco-friendly diesel fuel that's made from vegetable oil or animal fat. Unlike regular diesel and gasoline, producing biodiesel doesn't require petroleum. Instead, the raw materials are locally available and can be recycled from waste. If your car has a diesel engine, it can run on biodiesel fuel, usually without requiring any modifications. 
While biodiesel and petroleum diesel are similar in energy efficiency and fuel economy, biodiesel is more eco-friendly. For starters, it can be made from what would otherwise have been waste. For example, from vegetable oil from the kitchen of your local fast food joint. The restaurant simply discards its used fryer oil in a receptacle out back. Every few days, a vacuum truck comes by to collect it. In its current state, the oil contains water and food particles, making it unusable for biodiesel production. So the truck transports it to a filtering plant. There, they pump the oil into a holding tank, then heat it up to draw out the water. Once they drain the water, the oil is ready to enter a multi-stage filtering process. First, the oil goes through a vibrating sieve, which strains out the larger pieces of debris. After this first filtering, the oil is already visibly cleaner. Next, it passes through a second vibrating sieve. This one has a finer mesh, therefore it catches smaller particles of debris. After this second stage, the oil looks clean, but still contains microscopic debris. So it enters the third and final filtering stage. Passing through 20 ultra-fine filter cloths, which trap any particle larger than one micron in size. A micron is about 80 times smaller than the width of a human hair. The captured debris leaves a muddy residue on the filters. That vegetable oil, which once deep-fried potatoes, is now ready to cook up some diesel fuel. Another source of oil for making biodiesel is beef tallow, oil derived from cow fat. Biodiesel producers typically buy tallow from facilities like this one, which specialize in cleaning cow hides for leather tanneries. Sharp revolving blades shear off the fat from the back of the hide. The fat drops onto a conveyor, which moves it into a steam injection cook tank. The tank heats the fat to a gentle boil, extracting the oil. Everything else leaves the tank and drops into a waste container. The oil moves onward, passing through a two-stage filtration process. Whether the raw material is vegetable oil or beef tallow, the biodiesel producers refer to this main ingredient as feedstock. When the feedstock arrives at the biodiesel plant, it goes into a holding tank until production time. This demonstration illustrates the production recipe. They take the feedstock and combine it with methanol, a type of wood alcohol, as well as with a catalyst which triggers a chemical reaction. A processing unit mixes everything thoroughly while applying heat and pressure. The resulting chemical reaction produces a harmless byproduct, glycerin, a common ingredient in soaps and cosmetics. Processing consumes much of the methanol. Then they remove even more, leaving just a tiny percentage of it in the finished biodiesel. To ensure their fuel meets international regulatory standards, the plant's quality control lab samples from each production run. In this flammability test, they heat the fuel to 275 degrees Fahrenheit, then apply a flame to see whether the gases ignite. If they do, they have to remove more methanol to make the fuel safe. If they don't ignite, the fuel meets international safety standards. Biodiesel costs more at the pump but emits significantly less carbon dioxide and monoxide, and 85% fewer cancer-causing agents into the air we breathe.